Alrighty, so let's try this out. Let's pray to the Wi-Fi gods. Oh, I've been using my hotspot um, because the Wi-Fi has just been not working. Um, and ever since I got back here, so this is my first, well, I did one reading um, where the Zoom, like, you know, like I'm talking on Zoom, a mid-sentence, mid-flow, and it would just completely reset, sometimes for up to 30 seconds, you know, sometimes it was eight seconds. And it, it, it basically, I'd have to kind of like, it was just, it was just very flow killing, you know. Um, and yeah, also slow upload speeds, all that stuff, everything you can imagine. So we're praying that I just unplugged it um i turned it off several times unplugged like the power thing from the wi-fi but i never unplugged the thing from the the wall so my landlord said to do that i don't know how that could be different than unplugging the power switch but i guess we'll see so let's jump in um yeah i mean i don't even know what buttons are supposed to be solid and whatever but let's um let's let's take a look right so right off the bat we've got a cancer rising um i love cancer rising um for many reasons i feel like it makes uh especially with let's see sun sun in aquarius moon in aries right exactly wow i know i have my former best friend um had a very similar chart he was actually uh, Cancer Rising, but with Sun in Aries, Moon in Aquarius. So very similar. And um, so the effect that has is that, you know, being having your Sun, your Moon in two very dominant signs, right? Um, or I guess you could say two masculine signs, Fire and, and Air, Aries being very dominant. Uh, I don't know if I would call Aquarius dominant, but it is an air sign. It's a masculine air. It's masculine air and fire masculine. So when you have a cancer rising, it definitely gives like a very familial feel to that individual. Um, let's say you had an Aries rising instead, you know, you might come off too strong. There could be issues, let's just say, right? So it definitely um, has kind of a grounding effect um where you feel I, I think cancer risings like pe like it's almost like they feel like they're like, like people kind of they, they have this warmth to them that people feel you know like they're fa like they feel almost like they're like like family so it's really good when you have very strong energy which could be intimidating in other circumstances um to have that now with that said you also have venus in pisces on the midheaven so you have a very very strong venus so to have venus you know in that position gives you this uh, amazing ability to well first of all to track beauty in you know your external life and your career and and, and your dharma so it's, it's a great blessing to have venus on the midheaven um but you know it makes that planet and what that planet represents very very special very strong for you right um so venus is all about the finer things in life right and venus and pisces is like the ultimate romantic right it's about love it's about self-love um and what we what we value it's strongly linked to creativity and the arts and the finer things in life, right? So this is like the ultimate signature of someone who's very popular, right? To have Venus on the midheaven. Um, someone who can get along with just about anybody and um, really, really show love and affection. And if you were someone like in my position, like um, doing some kind of social media or, or even just like in some some career field you know any career field really where there you know is uh i'm back at my nails 
um, you know, a structure, other people around you and such, this would, you know, give you a huge advantage. Um, and it really allows you to, to do what you love doing, to do for a living. And it gives a lot of, of, of self-confidence, self-assurance. And, um, yeah, usually it's, it's a very good karmic placement. Um, so, because, you know, Venus is what you love and the midheaven is what you do your dharma so it's like your dharma in, in pisces is like about you know that's like pure compassion pure love uh you know big healing healer vibes and when i look at your south node in cancer right south node is down here the part of the chart that speaks about who you were your past life tendency you know the been there done that but it's conjunct chiron which is this, the you know the healing the, the wounded healer so i know for a fact that you were a you have, you know, heal, healer in your blood, right? It's it's a it's a part of you. I wouldn't be surprised if that's what you're doing for a living. Um, especially when I look at your Jupiter in the second house in Leo. I mean, that's just like someone who's just full of love and so much beauty and 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 energy to give to others, right? It's also very creative. And in the second house, it's a financial guardian angel. That's how I always refer to it, right? Because um, the second house is about money. It's also about self-esteem. So, you know, that that bodes very well for both of those those two things for you. Um, let's think. So, yeah, off the bat, I've, I've seen, you know, a, a good indicators of that. And then, and then having... You know, being Aquarius with with Aries um, is a nice a nice combo. It's two signs that are you know they're they're two signs away, right? So they're sextiling like the the elements Aquarius and, and Gemini and Aquarius and Aries. You know, they get along very well, and um, you know, it and as an Aries moon, right? You're someone who you know Aries moon sometimes can have short tempers. Um, they have this almost childish um, way of the, about them, like like, but it's very entrepreneurial, very adventurous, very like pioneering. You know, it's in the tenth house of of, of career, so um, you know, it would make me think, where's your Mars though? Is it hiding over there? And oh wow, it's in the twelfth. It is hiding in in Gemini twelfth. But yeah, so that actually bodes even more to this kind of healing Pisces energy because the twelfth house is the house um, that is uh, linked with Pisces. So um, to have the Aries Moon channel into that that you know that Mars in Gemini in the twelfth can give you like extreme powers when it comes to you know like anything around the esoteric like psychic abilities um real spiritual power and in, in, in gemini it gives you an ability a rare ability to speak about matters that might be difficult for others to speak about and to really put into words and we have to see what the other aspects are saying too but to be able to do that in a way that's very like um understanding like like or people can understand it right so it's very very nice um now, and it bodes really well with that, you know, with the fact that you have, you know, Chiron conjunct South Node. So, and then North Node is conjunct, it's, it's conjunct Neptune and also Saturn, but Saturn's in a different sign. But it makes sense, the Saturn one for sure. Um, but we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but yeah, karmically right off the bat, you know, I don't see any red aspects like hard as I see I see uh, Mercury square Pluto and that's it. You have very few aspects in your chart, which is very very interesting. Um, on aspect, it's Sun, very in a very lightly aspected in a very positive way. Your Moon, so that 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 usually bodes well for relations with uh, parents. And I want to look closer though, because sometimes my my program, my own program, will lie to me. 
Because do I see? Yeah, actually, so that is not true. No, because you have Pluto. You see, you didn't show me this one on the grid, but Pluto is squaring your sun. So that's actually a big time one. So that actually, uh, you know, a lot of times with the father, um, sun square Pluto is a very, very strong, important aspect to talk about. It is eight degrees away. Um, hold on. But um, it's a very, very important one. And in a tough one, right? Because basically what happens is as an Aries moon, there's that, that, that need to, to conquer, you know, you can never hold an Aries moon person down. Like they are resilient. And as an Aquarius, you know, you have that, that kind of genius, like um, unconventional way about you. Right. So it's clear that because you're South node, so I, I always connect like the karmic past with who you are today to make sense of everything, right? So as a first house south node, so first house south node in both systems, Placis and whole sign, conjunct, you know, the south node, or Chiron, you definitely were, as I said, you know, you have like healing, 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 within you right and also a lot of karmic healing that you need to do in this life which maybe comes from that father um and i want to see with the mother also with the moon yeah and even the moon it didn't show but you do have moon square uranus so that kind of takes back my statement um not to say that things are bad with the parents but you know you have moon square uranus and Sun square Pluto. So they're two very important aspects. So with Sun square Pluto, um, it just can give one a very intense nature, which can also come from the Aries moon. There can be lots of ego conflicts. So there's a huge need when you have that. Like it, it's kind of like the dark night of the soul. And it really pushes pushes one into um, experiencing their dark side, right? Um, experiencing their own shadow per se and um sometimes people have that they really like to be in control of situations um so it can it can create control freaks and um you're born in yeah so you're still young so so, so um yeah um but really it's like, it's really, so it can, especially around like, yeah, the father, authority figures in general, being an Aquarius, you know, that's the sign of the rebel, you know? So, um, and being a, a Aries moon, that's like energy of someone who never backs down, someone who says it how it is, you know? So, um, basically achieving, you know, more harmonious relationships, it, it, it requires this, this significant transformation, right? This death, Rebirth transformation. That's what Pluto is all about, right? And interesting is that Pluto's in your fifth house, right? So Pluto in the fifth house, from a karmic perspective, my karmic my karmic perspective is someone who who has a very important creative purpose, right? They they, they come in this life and it's almost like they've been they've kind of been held held back a little bit, right? Um, in your case, being South Node in Cancer, that's the you know the sign of the Moon. You're and it's the ruling sign, ruling planet of your chart. So you're being asked in this lifetime to be more masculine, right? To be more of a go-getter. To be more of a, um, you know, yeah, go-getter. And with the Venus where it is, um, you're kind of ensure it in Jupiter where it is, you know, you, those are two of the best at, at, um, placements you can have for material success. Jupiter second house is like the financial guardian angel as I was about, as I was getting ready to say. Um, so, and then mid heaven Venus, it kind of ins it ensures that like beauty, harmony, all these things will happen. Um, and in the ninth house with love that, you know, it could be that you marry someone from a different culture or just have like this love for traveling. So, yeah.
Now, um, more with this one. So yeah, it's really like, it, like I said, like um, it can be really tough to let things go. Um, with that, so 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 there can be that tendency to need to like control, dominate, which can come from you know the experience usually with the father, the son, and until that transformation comes to like a more relaxed attitude of life it can really cause lots of those kind of like i said journeys to the underworld to, like we're really um seeing the darker side of people darker side of reality um and it also can create either fascinations or, or fears of, of of you know losing control like even fear of death fear of like you know anything that you can't control right so some people who have this placement they just have it their whole life and they never confront it and they just live with this like agonizing fear. Um, so it all comes down to like a need to like sacrifice that, that need to control other people, right? To just let go complete, um, com complete kind of just boom, like, seeing the awareness of the tendency, seeing how it comes up and letting it go. Um, but really it's great for success, you know, um, cause you can really channel that intensity into, into hard work. Right. Um, and be really, really ambitious still, but less concerned with like the competition and all that stuff, which that that's where the problem can come. Right. Now, with Black Moon Lilith, you know, which is like kind of like your shadow, right? At 22 Sagittarius, which is one degree away from my sun or my moon. Um, that's kind of saying how you're the way that you kind of screw yourself over potentially. It's not a planet, so it's it's just a potential, is by being too is by pushing your opinion on other people too much, potentially. Um also like it could be like being dogmatic. Um, and also with respect to your routine, you know, there can be, especially with all that Uranus energy, Aquarius Uranus energy, there can be, it can be a very nonconformist individual who's really not willing to, um, put up with anything that anyone imposes on them, even if it's something that's positive. So, um, I'll go off my cam for a sec. I'll go off my cam for a sec. So I can't believe the internet's working so far. So far, so good. Mm, please continue. Um, so yeah, that's that's just a potential, right? Um and sixth house, black and low, you know, so you have your 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 moon in the tenth, so you'd probably do better as an entrepreneur. Or someone who who controls their own destiny in, in some type of way, but then you know your midheaven is Pisces, so it's like really wanting wanting to do something, leave 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 a positive mark on humanity. And as an Aquarius Sun, that's you know very in in Mercury, that's very much the case, right? Someone who really wants to, who has causes they care about, you know, your Mars in the twelfth house also in Gemini, like really probably you know I could see you being like an advocate in some type of way for you know, people who are less privileged or people who from, you know, tough backgrounds, something like that, right? Um so yeah, there can be trouble like organizing like your daily work routine and um schedule. And um it can just create issues at work, even though everything else has been really positive. Um Lack of organization, right? That could be one of the things in the sixth house, black and blue. Um, and then also like taking on too much work, you know, and being so so competitive with that Aries moon, that sun square Pluto, where you just like, you know, just like workaholic kind of syndrome, right? Um, to prove like where it's like trying to prove yourself in some type of way. Um, yeah. So. It's it's really about like valuing valuing yourself, um, and taking care of taking care of your 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 day by day health, and not putting too much 
on the table for you to where you're just overloaded and burnt out and then sicknesses can appear, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, so, yeah. And yet, like I was saying in Sag, um, it can also be someone who just throws themselves, like Superman syndrome or Superwoman syndrome, who just throws themselves into too many ventures. Um, and there needs to be like some some self restraint, you know. Um, and yeah, because someone who can be like reckless in the 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 pursuit of their goals and a little bit like with the Aries Moon, right? A little bit impulsive. So just grounding the self is really really important for you. And is there any Earth in the chart in the in the, in the personal planets? I don't think so. No. So you have no Earth like my like myself. So that adds to what I was just saying, right? Where there's certainly a need to really push yourself to um, be organized and to you know to to have that um, organization built in and. It shows with your north node, right? So your north node is like where you're trying to get to in this lifetime. It's in Capricorn, conjunct Saturn, which is the planet that rules Cap, the, the ruler of the north node. So the ruler of the north node is conjunct the north node. Um, that is very significant. It's really showing that in this life you're you're really really trying to, like I said, master being your own metaphoric father. Maybe your father wasn't there for you in the way you needed him to be there for you. Um, maybe there was like a competition. Maybe there was like some kind of perfectionism in the family, something that just didn't really roll, roll with you. So, and let's see the squares, no squares. No, let me just double check my eyes though. So it'd have to be an Aries or Libra. No. So yeah. Um, that's that's very very important um and so yeah with the ruler conjuncted um it's 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 just indicative especially in saturn that you know when you reach your saturn return which is actually literally right like around the corner like it's very it's like in the next month like so i would highly highly suggest to do what nearly pretty much everyone does um which is so you get this reading in the follow-up obviously and since i started introducing this it's been just completely magical um and that is to add the current astrology reading and saturn return reading so it, like it, it's just like you know, it's, 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 it's just like a, a little addition, right? Um, but it's like basically instead of having one hour where we go over the nail chart, we, we still have that, but we add the current astrology. So it's like the year ahead with the added Saturn return chart. And it's usually like, I don't know, 380 years. I forget, but I would do it for 265 for you. Um, so like over a hundred dollars off. So let me know if you're interested in that. Um, and we would program that in the next you know whenever i like uh you know next available appointment it's not like a long wait like this one it's you know it's it's it's, it's a live one on zoom so first hour is is talking about the reading and then we seamlessly move into all my predictive techniques uh show your sad return chart get some more you know ideas about kind of what's coming for you and um how to really understand everything and for you this sad return is so important because as I'll show you here in your chart, you have, um, like I said, Saturn is on your North Node, right? Saturn is this. This is the North Node. So that makes someone where someone someone where so, where you know that they're gonna really, especially Saturn in the eighth house, a uh, lots of fears are gonna be are gonna be um, faced, you know. Um, and I'm looking for something. But yeah, so like the, the the Saturn return itself, right? Um, it is really a point of rebirth from the from like the karma that rules so much of the first, you know, I guess twenty nine and a half years of the. It can it starts around twenty eight to thirty, but yeah, for you, um, yeah, and um, 
basically life experiences up to one's late twenties are really driven by prior karma. Uh, if you think about it, like you know, you don't really choose or like fit like you like from a scientific like you know non metaphysical standpoint. You know, you don't choose your parents. You don't choose where you go to school. You you know, know who your classmates are. You don't choose that you know, school and, and all that up until potentially university, if you go to university. And then after that, you, sh- you know, you might get a job. You don't really choose who your boss is and you don't really choose who your room or you do. But you know what I mean? Like all these things. Then when you get the sign return, that's where a lot more free will um, is is added to the equation. So, Yeah. It's like we don't consciously choose our family of origin and all that stuff. So um, it's really about the development of maturity. And um, it's like, you know, young people do usually feel like they mature around 18 or 21. But it's not until the Saturn turn that you truly, truly, truly settle, settle into like that fully realized sense of identity. Right. Um, that's when you really become an adult. And I've seen it so many times with myself included, you know, like you think you're an adult, but then the Saturn turn hits and it's like, you just never know. Like it's literally so God is so like <laughs> tricky with how um, these things work out. So it's very interesting. Um. So, yeah, I mean, just that Chiron in the South Node, it's just showing like, like basically how important healing yourself in this lifetime, but also healing others um, is to you, has been to you and continues to be to you and how you can use these tools that you've developed in past lives, you know, on yourself and Potentially to help others, right? Um, it's like, you know, Chiron is something that has been, you know, directly experienced in your karmic past, and now it's being brought forward in this life, right? So um, a lot of times, you know, people who have South American junk Chiron, they experience lots of pain with their around their family in, in cancer, right? Family in early childhood. And in the first house, you know, it's around identity. You know, and it's around um, sometimes feeling like uh, like they can't be themselves. As an Aquarius, it's all about you know being like taking the the road less traveled, right? So, um, and then with a planet conjunct the North Node, um, so that represents a quality that has been developed in recent prior lives, um, but that you're trying to. Like it's like um it's it's almost like you've been working on it, right? So that there will be like a natural maturity and capacity for responsibility that you'll have. Um, so it's not like you're completely in the dark with that, but um, you're it's like it's like basically it's like half the work or so like like you're continuing like a a karmic like like a journey from like a very important karmic journey from last lifetime pretty much right and um yeah so it's like a lot of times like it could be like a very critical family structure um, but yeah, someone who has a very important role. Um, and yeah, so it being in, well, in, in the signs of Capricorn and in Aquarius, it's like, um, you know, it's, it's really about, about taking accountability and responsibility even for things that you can't control, you know, and if it's the family thinking about, okay, what's the, what's the karma, you know? 
So, yeah. So, then to have the ruler of the node itself conjunct the node, um, that is really like about the need to relive your 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 prior life experiences in this life, right? Um, so in specific, the um, yeah, I guess that's kind of how I would say it. Yeah, so, so so lots of like past life work could be very, very um like past life regressions could be very, very uh positive, for example. Um, so yeah, with that said, um, that's kind of the test is like, how can you be your own, you know, how can you hold yourself accountable? How can you, you know, leave the comforts of one second answer text? Sorry, it's my girlfriend. So yeah, um, it's 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 a big test, but the Saturn return will, is is really going to be crucial for you and to understand you know that energy. That's why I was kind of saying that that'd be a very good idea um, to get that reading. So you can let me know about that. No pressure, obviously. Um, but yeah, so you're really trying to yeah, really trying to look, like learn self accountability, learn self responsibility. But then Saturn is in the eighth, right? Because it's in different sign, different house. So in that situation, you know, Saturn the eighth can give someone like a very serious approach to the esoteric. Um, it can also ca cause a lot of fears around that. And it also can cause a lot of fears around vulnerability in relationships, right? And having that Pisces, that very, very exalt like exalted um, Pisces Venus, right? Which makes someone very romantic. It also with your Neptune, you see this, Neptune is on the descendant, which can really, really make someone blind um, when it comes to love. It can give someone like the rose colored glasses syndrome, you know, where they um, they see the per the person as perfect and, and this and that. And really, you know, uh, they, they, there's a huge need. There's a there's a, a large potential to be um, kind of. How you say this? There's a huge potential to be like for energy vampires into the picture, you know. So you really have to be. There's a need, um, a, a need to take times, take time. Excuse me. so yeah there's a need to to really um to really like be grounded when it comes to relationships and because like a lot of people who have this type of thing have the the disney like the, the whole disney ideal can really affect them So, yeah, in your case, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's critical to, 
to um to lean into to whatever fears there that you know there are and an eighth house saturn can also represent you know fear of death you know fear yeah fear of the unknown fear of like i said also fear of things that can't be controlled and it can it can you know with that pluto uh square um that pluto square um it can really make someone resist that needed transformation so yeah um i want to open the thing up yeah so 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 um super romantic but gotta be careful for the wrong kinds of people um and with your juno in the also in capricorn you know you're gonna be attracted to you know you, you really want to have a very balanced and fair and and kind of not i don't know why i was gonna say precious but you know like a very balanced fair relationship um but you're going to want, you're going to be attracted to, the, you know, potentially someone older, um, someone who has their shit together, someone who you can really respect and who respects you, right? And want, you, you really want, you know, both someone who wants long term commitment. Um, a lot of people who have that, you know, they, they, it's after their sad return or it's like later in life, you know, that they get married. Um, and yeah, Juno in the seventh house is more super romantic energy, you know, really wanting to have long term into relationships is a huge goal. And uh, it's a very nice place to have Juno. Sorry. One sec. I'm going to pause and mute this for two seconds. Okay, Jesus Christ. Her girlfriend's out with her two friends, and she's like, I want one more shot. And she's not even like a big drinker. Okay, now she can just... Go away. So, anyways, she's a lot younger than me, so I'm not really in my party days. And she's not really either, but you know, yeah, she's 22. Like, go have fun with your friend, your friends. She's loyal, Scorpio. You know, she said she had five drinks. She's very honest, also, so. Six is probably, I would say, the limit for her. And she sent me a video. So she's not sloppy drunk, which I've only seen her twice. She's definitely tipsy 
high tipsy. So hopefully, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. So she's fine. And they all look like, her three, three friends all look like they're like the same level of having fun and whatever. Anyways, so back to what we were talking about um, with the love stuff. So in addition to that, though, there's there's more is that Uranus is conjunct Juno. So when you have Uranus, the planet of change, conjunct Juno, that makes you a very unique individual in terms of your tastes. Um, and you're unlikely to be like the kind of domestic woman, you know, um, more of a free spirit um, than like the traditional woman even though Juno in, in, in that sign would, would be like that, but, um, you know, very independent and really wanting someone who, um, and very good at compromising also. Right. So, um, really need that intellectual connection and, in you know, liking someone for their, how eccentric they are and, and how, how, how different they think as opposed to like, um, you know, like someone super traditional, right. It could be a balance of those two which can be difficult also, right? But definitely someone who you can respect, um, but then who also, like, isn't just, like, a bot, you know? Um, so, yeah. And really, like, you know, attracting someone who appreciates, like, this very unique kind of Aquarian uh, personality. Um, so that's important. And yeah, also having Uranus in the seventh as well is going to, you know, with Neptune there, just just those two together in that house and, and North Node is that, you know, relationships are very faded. They play a huge role in your life. Um, and, you know, like I said, you have to watch out for for what I said you have to watch out for. But, you know, you'll you'll definitely be attracted to, yeah, to the more unconventional, you know, Um you know, freedom within relationships, right? Is it so important? Um, like, so, so having relationships where you can still have that real solid base, right? Which the Capricorn descendant wants, and the ascendant and you know Cancer wants that, that that security, financial, emotional, all that. Like, it's like building a solid foundation, but also to not feel like you're just so sucked in that relationship that it's 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 pushing away that that Aquarius need to be. To individuate, because that's what you, a big thing that you're here for, you know, is to is to really be, it's not rely so heavily on other people, which has probably been a hunch for you in past lives, right? Um, and you can learn about your own individuality through relationships. You can have relationships with, with individuals who, uh, is an example, like someone like me, not me, but like me, who just needs lots of space, who's very introverted, who is very Aquarian. Um, yeah. And then also with the Neptune there, um, which is the one that's right on, well, I guess they're both right on the descendant. They're both the descendant squeezed in between these two. Um, that, so I talked about that already, but there's another aspect of that is that there can be this, this, this search for perfection in terms of a partner um, and becoming very, very disillusioned with imperfections. And um, but then also there's this ability to really attract spiritual relationships. So very spiritual, very esoteric centric relationships that are all built on solid principles. Right. And then the North node. So, so now talking about this axis of, of South node in the first North node in the seventh, that's talking about, um, how there's a need to be more compromising in relationships, but not to the point of where you're giving up your individuality right so it i the way i see it with this whole chart is i see it as like let's see there's and yeah and, and juno is 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 actually uh sextiling it which is really good that means that you're you're gonna you're, you have lots of luck with the partners that you get right and uh, north notes also or midheaven's also sextiling it so that actually gives lots of karmic luck with your career also maybe even there's a like those two are intertwined who knows love and career um, 
but then we also have to think that the um, that Saturn is opposing the south node, just as it's conjuncting the north node. So when I think about that, I think, okay, that there was something that was blocking you from really expressing your full individuality in past lives. Um, perhaps it's, you know, your, you know, it could, it could be like your current father, you never know. Um, or just a force in general, you know, that, that pushed you away and made, and kind of like, uh, kind of pushed down, like that down that, like that gifted healer side of you. Um, so yeah, it's really a quest for like very good relationships, um, and letting go of like, uh, Ego centeredness, um, and not com not compromising at all, right? Um, but really, just find it's it's I see it like a lot is like finding a balance between Aries, right, which is your moon, which is like so independent and so like like the the extreme of Aries, right? I'm not saying this is Aries. The extreme of Aries is like so independent that I'm not going to fucking do like compromise for shit. Like it's my way or the highway. One person fucks up in anything. It's done. And then the extreme of Libra, which is complete codependency. Like I know I'm nothing without this person, like losing all, like let's say you have this amazing creative project going on. You're like a painter or something, or like you're an artist, you're an astrologer, whatever psychology or wh whatever you are. And then like you start dating someone, they completely just like take over and everything's about them. You know, so it's very important not have that. But, you know, your Venus is very well aspected by Chiron and Pluto with trines. So you definitely have um, this ability to uh, have very, very life changing and powerful relationships that uh, ultimately contribute to you. Um, you know, they, they help like the, your, your relationships really help you um, get past that, get, like like find that that strength within yourself. So it could be with um, people who have astrological signatures that are a little bit less codependent you know which might be a struggle at first right with the south node in, in 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 cancer but you know when you lean into that moon in aries which is so independent um you know just kind of like i always talk about the aquarian relationship it's like this concept i came up with which is like like for example I, i'm with my girlfriend she's an aries moon too by the way and she, you know, I, I made it very clear from the start, like, I have my own space, you have your own space, I have my room, you have your room, you know, you have your life, I have my life, and then the way, you know, they can intertwine the ways they do, but, you know, I'm not going to change, like, of course, I'm not going to cheat on her, Um, I'm not going to, you know, do this or that, but I'm going to require a lot of alone time, we have different interests, but then we have some that, that are similar, right, so it's like, like that's kind of an example of like uh maybe I'll, I'm probably like a, a very very large extreme but um you know it does force the 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 individual to really um go in that direction of of like of of having their own life but still having the relationships. I'm afraid of Trump girlfriend just sprinting up the stairs. But anyways, um, and you said you wanted cats. So I wrote that down. So I'm going to give you a little cat action. This is Esme, the champion, two-time champion of my cat contest. Esme, say hi. Say hi, Esme. She just, literally just said hi. She hi, you baby. FedEx. FedEx. He's camera shy. FedEx. Get FedEx. Felix, Felix, look. Shut the blue eyes, Felix. Okay, close them. Esme, you're the champion for a reason. Yeah, where's Mika? Mika? Yeah, no, chicky, 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 chicky. Yeah. Okay. Maybe she'll climb on my lap in a sec. Come on, Esme. Come here, come here. She will never, never lose an opportunity to be on Daddy's lap. Come on, ask me. Come here. Oh, you want to stay next to me? That's usually where I want you to stay. And now the one time, not the one time, but this time I want you on my lap. You don't want to come on my lap. I see how it is. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. She disagreed. 
You had you good there. Esme. Esme. Okay. So in Cancer, Pisces rising, Sag Moon, baby. And Aries Mars. Right? You got some fire in you. That's what kept you alive all those months in the cold. Where you're the only one that survived of your litter. Till I found you. Oh man. Okay. So Okay, what what are you saying? She's saying keep petting me. I can read Esme. She actually talks a lot. If you can hear. Esme? Esme? Say something. Esme? Say something else. Come on, my lad. Esme? Esme? Say something. Hmm? I don't want to. Okay. Fine. Fine, fine. So anyways, um, now there's even more significance to this eighth house, right? Because your sun is in the eighth house, like mine. Um, very significant. Uh, and Mercury. So basically here, you know, people who are eighth house suns, it is like a Scorpio placement. So you have you have no Scorpio, but it's like you you have uh, uh, it's like you do, basically. The this this the Pluto, which is rules Scorpio squaring your sun in the 8th house makes you very Scorpionic. And that is someone, 8th houser, man, we are people who want to go under, like, we want to explore, like, the, the, the meaning of life, like, within ourselves, the dark side, you know, the underground, um, and it's all about death, rebirth, transformation. I, I've yet to meet an 8th house son who has not described their life, agree with me when I say the following statement, that, you know, your life, has gone through such dramatic changes. Like you've had different eras, you know, where in one era you were like, um, here's Esme, you know, like, like it was almost like an actress was like playing you, you know, cause you're so different. So, um, yeah, it really makes someone who, who, who's also, there can be inheritance, inheritances. You can benefit from other people's, uh, you know, from, from partnerships or from, from um you know like uh, a partner or you know and, and other people's resources basically and you're always looking for like the 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 undercover you know like the, the deeper deeper meaning in life so like small talk even you know having the, the gemini mars will help with that and you you definitely can do it but you're really more interested in in you know your your interest which you know with the, the um Pisces, you know, uh, Venus is going to be very spiritual, right? So, and then with the Mercury there, you know, you'll communicate, you'll be very ahead of your time and your thinking. It's like Mercury in, in Aquarius is like the genius Mercury, you know, it's like the person who thinks outside the box. And, you know, a lot of times with a chart like this, I, I see that sometimes in, when, when we have our follow-up, hopefully the, the follow-up in current, make sure you take notes and you res like, because I'll forget everything I'm saying right now, you know? So make sure you like, like watch, most people watch a few times, you take notes and you kind of like remind me of things I said, um, and kind of respond to them, you know, and, and we'll, we'll take it one by one. But, um, yeah, so basically eighth houses are just, they're, they're people who, who go, who go through such intense death, rebirth transformations that they grow so much. Their life is so, they're very intense people. Um, and yeah, just like, like really want to go like probe deep into the real meaning of life. Right. Um, also you're someone who feels the undercurrents of, of other people's energy really intensely. So being around the right kind of people is extremely important. That goes with your 12th house Mars as well. Um, and yeah, and that with like the unconventional, unconventionality and, uh, unpredict unpredictability and, uh, Almost like, yeah, just future-oriented, innovative kind of Aquarius energy. It's very interesting how that works together, right? Um, so, yeah, very, very exciting. Someone who likes to explore. You're here to explore. You know, you're here to explore and not just follow the path that, you know, your family or society wants you to take. You know, it's supposed to be your own. And, you know, a lot of that comes down to surrender and to trust, right? And yeah, the Mercury there, as I was saying,
Okay, I just had my first, my first cutoff, my first Zoom cutoff, 55 minutes in. So my first Zoom cutoff, 55 minutes in, just happened for about three seconds. So I was past it, I guess not. But if it's one per reading, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Um, but as I was saying, yeah, Mercury in the eighth house just makes someone who just wants to go deep, deep with their mind is so unsuperficial. They want to go to the meaning, like really get to the core of things. Um, anything about like, you know, like from sex, the occult, um, you know, anything that the delves beneath the surface, um, the underground, you know, the, the unreported parts of life, that's interesting to you, right? Things like, I don't know, like mafia or like, um, you know, uh, ancient Egypt, Atlantis, like these kind of mysteries. You're a mystery solver. And like I, I was saying, when you have that, and if your parents are more traditional, which with the sex, you know, with them being in sextile positions, uh, I don't like I, I don't know if they're like divorced or still together. Like they could have a good relationship between each other, but then with you, there can just be some tension, but I'm not saying there's no, like, like there's like no love or anything. Um, but yeah, very unique ideas. So, um, very outside the box, very ahead of your time. And you really want to, you know, like very inventive thinker, you know, so, so and someone who rebels against the traditional and the old, so that can kind of, you know, be, be difficult, right. Um, if, when you're young. And uh, it can make that Chiron first house like kind of fear to kind of like put yourself out there. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, I talked about the eighth house Saturn, which is like a lot around like, you know, it, it can it can like if there is an inheritance or like like uh, that kind of thing, like where you're benefiting through other people's resources, it's usually after the Saturn return. Um, but yeah, like really like intimacy is a big one here. Sexuality and you know really like leaning into the into into that exact transformation so you i wouldn't be surprised if um hopefully when we do our the current reading or regardless the follow-up you tell me that that you're really like this is where you're really like emerging spiritually like you're really feeling it now you know like it, like i would i wouldn't be surprised if it was a, a recent thing of course it's you know like I, I i can't tell and you are an aquarius so aquarius are so unpredictable that like you know you just don't know um and with that eighth house sun, maybe not actually, because with eighth house sun, you know, the, the odds are that you've always been very interested in in things that um, maybe other people aren't. One other thing with eighth house sun I noticed is that when they stay, like I moved around a lot, right? Moon. But when they stay put in the place they grew up, it can be very difficult for them, especially like if they have like friends they grew up with who kind of... Um, stayed the same while they changed while, while they grew. And the reason for that is that it's, it's obvious, right? It's like, imagine you're growing, you're changing, you're going through all these transformations and they're staying the same and they're, they're still wanting that older version of you. So moving, I've, I've noticed a lot of eighth house sun people move, but then you have your South node cancer, which can make you really want to like stay close to home and family and all that. So there's, yeah, potential tension there. Um, but yeah, lots of like, just like someone who, yeah, like with the moon and, and, uh, and Mars just like self, self, they're very, like very able to, 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 to reach your goals. And then moon trying Jupiter, that's such a beautiful one that makes someone, you know, like it adds kind of a Sag vibe to your, your Aries moon, like very generous, good natured, very popular, um, And, um, yeah, very optimistic, able to see the big picture, uh, especially when it comes to your, the death, rebirth transformation, that plutonic intensity, being able to see like how it all kind of plays. Right. Um, and someone who can make adventurous, adventurous plans, which prove successful if it's traveling, right. But what, you know, regardless of what it is and really good for money. Um, and just, you know, enjoying the company of other people and, uh, and, 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 and being very good at like at, at 
you know, meaning, uh, uh, reaching goals with other people. As long as that Pluto square doesn't make you like dominate them too much. Because of every moon sign, Aries moon is the most dominant. Um, there is that, there's such a, so competitive, such an emotional need for action, you know, independence, right? They like to challenge themselves, right? It's super ambitious. And, um, yeah, just go getter energy, spiritual warrior. Nothing can, can like put them down. Like, uh, but then there's the anger, you know, that impulsivity. So the, there's a big need to watch out for that. Um, yeah. So Sun and, and Mercury are conjunct, but not in the same sign, or not, not combust. So they're in a good range. So that's really good for that's good for intelligence. Um, good for com communication. Um enjoying intellectual stimulation and yeah, really looking like to, like to, to find avenues to, you know, to, like like-minded people and avenues to really communicate your ideas. Um, and sometimes people with us can like be very focused on talk, like getting their ideas out and less focused on listening to others. But really it's like, you know, you have a high standards of what's interesting to you, you know? So, yeah, moon in the 10th is just like there's an emotional attachment to your dharma, you know, to your work, your life work, whatever that is, your achievements, right? Um, it's very likely that you'll succeed, like I said, in your chosen profession. Um, I've seen so many of, of those indicators. Um, and it's very good for, yeah, faint like potential fame popularity these types of things right um uh, but you have to watch out for that fall from grace if, if there's any complacency and with yeah with the midheaven being in pisces you know that that's just like um yeah that, like really wanting to make a difference in the world um and it can also like make it so like there can be some level of sacrifice in your career but really like wanting to serve like so let's say you have this potential to be like this real estate mogul but you choose to like uh, you know, help people as a psychologist instead, for example. Um, there can also be lots of, um, there can be like uh, changes of profession and um, sometimes feeling overwhelmed by career de career decisions. But really you want your career decisions to be reflect, to, to help you grow your kind of your worldview and, and, and your understanding of, of what truth is. So Mars being in the 12th, in, um, that so that's a difficult placement because uh it can feel like your 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 boundaries um sense of of personal power is somehow eroded um like uh there can be like these like the feeling like your boundaries are 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 um kind of being infringed upon at, and uh, a strong need to kind of put those put up strong boundaries with people and also there can be these random emotional outbursts especially with the Aries moon. They come out of the blue, right? And there can be like a, a, a sense of like loss of direction. But like really like uh, with 12th house Mars people, I see that as like they really need to learn that they, especially the Aries moon, that they are like, um, you know, a, 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 a chariot with nine different horses, horses, you know, and it's like learning to get them all going in the same direction. But then Mars and Gemini, man, so good for intelligence. Uh, they use their words as weapons, and they just love to initiate ideas, spread information, and make someone very assertive with their communication. But it's in the twelfth house, so it's like it's it's a little bit kind of dicey. Where it's like, um, yeah, there there isn't. What was that noise? There isn't necessarily like. Like, like, um, you have to like dig deep spiritually to really find that power, right? So it connects with your moon because your moon is ruled by Mars. So, um, like the lower vibe of this is someone who just like makes goes has like a cycle of like kind of impulsive. It's like finding the neutral mind is the best, where it's like you have like the trigger, 
And then you with through like the meditation or whatever you're doing, you have like the spaciousness that you create that makes you not just be like trigger reaction, trigger reaction. So it's instead it's trigger and then more balance and calm reaction, which when you lack earth in your chart, like you do, there's a big need for you to go out and get that earth, which means organize your life, which means have that routine, which means focus on your, your physical, mental, spiritual, emotional health. Like literally like your day-to-day -day routine, you have to like going on hikes, right? Like physically getting in earth. Um, just, you know, I, I lack, lack earth. I always talk about how it makes me like really, really difficult for me to be the same person day, day after day, you know? Um, but you can work on it by like, for example, like I run not every day, but you know, like I'm trying to do it three or four times a week. Right. And that helps me tremendously. Um, meditation, stuff like that, that can be your pillars when things get a little bit crazy. Right. So with the asteroids, you know, we talked about Juno, where series series is in, it's on your IC in Virgo. Beautiful. So, um, actually that's no, palace. What are talking about? So palace is the third high. Well, palace and Virgo also. So palace in the third house makes someone very intelligent, um, eager to acquire, you know, knowledge, um, and just very creative when it comes to having like original ideas and just like, like someone who eats up, um, knowledge, right. Uh, who just wants more knowledge, more knowledge, more knowledge. And the effect that has palace is kind of like, like mercury. So having it actually, wow, you have, you have Pallas trying Mercury. So it's like these, these, these are like the third eye and the brain, right? So it's like these two different types of, of, of intelligence, right? Um, so Pallas and Virgo gives a very – actually, no, they're not trying. I'm so sorry. I screwed up. Um, my bad. They're five signs away. They're, they're, they're quincunx. So actually, that's, there's a tension between them, but it's not that serious. But Pallas and Virgo gives a very analytical mind. Um, so it can be really good for like, you know, detail oriented projects, uh, being able to really like have like a strong dis discriminating, disc like, like discrim how do you say it? Like, like str a strong power of like discriminate, dis um, like, uh, how can I say in English? Like being able to like, really like, like, like see things clearly, you know, um, like high powers of discrimination. Um, and yeah, it can make one, it can be very good for being a healer. And the fact that it's on your IC would relate that to your early childhood. Like maybe you felt like you had to like be like the healer in your family. Um, so yeah. So then we have, um, you know, part of you know, we'll, we'll go series in Scorpio. So that is very interesting. That goes very well with, with everything I've been saying. Which in the fifth house, um, you know, there's that that need, you know, um, series is kind of like a second moon, but not as important. It's like how you nurture yourself, how you feel nurtured. So um, you like to look out, look, like you you feel really cared for and loved when there's a level of intensity and focus and intention attention on you, right? Um, and you you you're very emotionally committed to the, those close to you. So there's that you really like in relationships that would bode for like really, really wanting that, that, clo that, um, that closeness on the, you know, that, that kind of Pisces Venus level of like spiritual closeness and the fifth house, it's like, you, know, you, you, um, look after yourself through creative, artistic and fun. Um, I guess routines are just like, like hobbies. Right. Um, also, it makes you very like loving and caring with children. The Jupiter and Leo also will make you lo love children. Also, be able to express your inner, inner child, and it makes people attracted to your playfulness. So then, finally, there's Vesta, which is kind of like Saturn, but like a more fun version. It's in eleventh house in Taurus, so that makes someone who in the eleventh house very dedicated to the group um, and to higher Aquarian ideals. Um, really important to like define your personal beliefs and visions, right? Which goes well with the Aquarius. And um, yeah, just like, like, like playing your role in the collective. And then in Taurus, it's um, really being able to work in a very stable, consistent manner. Um, so 
when you set your mind on something, you can really, really, really be set on it and just go and go and go. Um, but there's a need to like, you know, avoid being inflexible, which, you know, I mean, Aquarius is Aquarius, but sometimes Aquarius can be stubborn and Aries also, right? They're car uh, one spit, it's a fixed sign of cardinal signs. So, and then you're a cancer rising. So those are three you know, potentials for stubbornness. So you really have to watch out for that as well. Potential for being stubborn. Um, Okay, let's pull up. Let's pull up the fixed stars and asteroids. My special list. Wow. Okay, so you have Sirius rising and Vulcanus. So Vulcanus, oh, Sirius is the closer one, but Vulcanus, I can tell you about that, is that that's exactly what it sounds like. Volcanic. So you're a uh, cancer rising, but, um, you know, having, having, a uh, Vulcanist there is, um, it's, it's, it's adding that to that potential for those explode, those random explosions. So the, the real need to kind of like ground yourself and, and not, and, and look at like, and that, you know, that, that, that Pluto square closer. And I didn't even talk about such the the uranus square moon i didn't even talk about that so let's hold the brakes for a second um basically uranus square moon is a very very important if not the most important asset in your whole chart and that gives someone like a almost like like such a need for stimulation and it can give like the grass is green on the other side type energy so it's like a it, it gives someone a it, it goes very well with your aquarius moon aquarius sun it's like a life full of change excitement peculiar events um but it can definitely add some kind of eccentric behaviors um, and emotions that can kind of swing back and forth, right? So it can be hard to, to, to be grounded. So it's a big, big test, especially lacking the earth. Um, yeah, very compulsive emotionally, right? So you already have the Aries moon. So it gives someone like a, you know, a very unique, odd way of doing things, um, but usually quite open-minded and very experimental, right? Um, so also, usually, so one common thing with moon, uh, square Uranus is, is actually moving around a lot, you know, moving around a lot. Um, it could have happened when you were younger. Um, and also it makes you, because the moon represents, you know, also the public. So it makes you stand out from the crowd in a very notable way. You're someone who definitely stands out, especially with Pisces on the midheaven. Um, really, really rebellious. Almost like it can be reckless and disruptive, right? Um, also, like it can make someone like super, super like like in relationships, like form like emotional bonds, but then have trouble maintaining long term relationships, right? So, so that that kind of goes with with you know, it, it's just difficult, you know, like like for that. So that's with your North Node, you're really being pushed to like. To, you know, and, and with with the Neptune there, what, what I said earlier about about being kind of turned off easily, like this is going to make that even more, like one little red flag, I'm I'm out kind of energy, right? Um. So a lot of times this can come from like a uh, emotional detachment by the mother. Um. So, yeah, usually un an unorthodox kind of upbringing, that you know usually had a, quite a, a lot of freedom. Um. But like the big issue is 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 the balance between emotional nurturing and that independence and attachment, like that fun, like let's do this, let's go there, let's do this, let's go there, um, and that emotional nurturing. So so in relationships, it's like oh, stay with this guy, oh, but like if I was single, I could do this, I could do this, I could do that, I could do that, that kind of thinking, right? So it's really about finding the balance there. Um, also like the big thing here is that like more more traditional conservative people can just be kind of shocked by you which isn't necessarily a bad thing just a natural rebel prankster kind of energy um yeah like there can be a real like lack of like kind of respect for tradition so if you were like raised like in a very traditional like religious household <laughs> i'd love to hear stories um but it's very exciting and very humanitarian, very, very, very genius. Um, because you view things from your own your own, you know, you, you have that intellectual flexibility and, and intellectual um mutability, right? So that actually really helps with 
uh, what I was saying about the potential for me getting stuck. So yeah, so when it comes to career, it's like so important to like have a steam a career that really really stimulates you, right? Uh, and allows you to express like these very unique talents. And when it comes to children, because I mean, is that how you nurture it? It can make you nurture in kind of like a a different type of way, you know, a way that's not traditional. All right, moving forward, uh, I was talking about Sirius. So, um, yeah, Sirius is, is, is a wealth star. So, um, you know, it can make someone just super, super ambitious, ambitious. Um, and uh, like Michael Jordan had it, right. Like, uh, Mark Wahlberg, Einstein. So it's very like strong Steven Spielberg. Um, yeah, just like a very nice one to have. Like, uh, yeah. Like the USA is uh is born on uh the day is con- sun is conjunct serious right so it is um uh, and that's like so many indications of wealth in your chart and then you have Circe on your Jupiter so that is a witch energy so that is literally Jupiter makes everything bigger so you are a witch um doesn't someone who doesn't take shit from other people right. And then part of fortune is also in Leo in the second. So that's another really good one for money and for self-esteem. And like, you know, when, when you have like a, a real set of values, um, that's your own spiritual values, that's where you really thrive. Um, and you know, for part of fortune, Leo people, they, they, they tend to really feel that, like their greatest joy and flow when they're achieving like power and honor and success and, avoiding distractions and, and really on that creative purpose that that Pluto in the fifth house is asking you to achieve, you know, Pluto fifth house people, they enter their life with a feeling like I have a special creative purpose here and I need to achieve it. And then you have Zubin al Shalami conjunct Pluto and Serpentis. So, um, you know, Serpentis conjunct Pluto is very dif- difficult. Um, but because it's like such a slow moving planet, a lot of people in, in your generation or I guess our generation, our Pluto and Scorpio generation have it. Um, and basically, you know, you just got to watch out for that Scorpio stinging really hard, you know. Um, and Zubin al Shalami is about herbs, it's about magic, it's about poetry. So having that, you know, it, it, that can be like, you know, some, some, something that you can be very, very talented in. And then the devil is on your IC. So it's like, you know, that's about truth seeking, you know, about like really, really seeking the truth, um, like astrology, things of that nature. So you might be like, you know, and your palace is conjuncted too. So, you know, you, that kind of Virgo energy, your palace is like really like looking for the, the, the real truth to everything. Your vertex is in the sixth, um, in, in Sag, zero degrees conjunct Eros. So, um, you know, your doorway to higher awareness is through, through love, but, but, you know, but, all, but re- really, really through, through adventures, um, you know, through, through, through the chances you take the adventures you go, you embark on and, you know, through, um, through, through service, you know, and through, and, 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 and through organizing your daily life in that way I've been talking about, right. Okay. I have to like stare at these. I can't tell what numbers what. So, um, So yeah, child and union conjunct midheaven. Um, that's kind of like the inner child playing out in your career, and um, and also you know, like I said, that like you could you meet your lover, and 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 have some kind of like life work that you guys do together. And Mark have on Venus, okay. And then is there anything on the moon? Doesn't look like it. 
And on Mars, there is Cupid, Hades. Ooh, interesting. And, oh, Aldebaran. What do you know? So that's a royal star on your Mars. Um, so Aldebaran is a in the 12th house, though. So that's, that's uh, you know, well, Aldebaran is, is a Mars planet, though. So in the 12th, and is it a day or a night chart? Is it day charts? So basically, Mars and Aldebaran together um is really really liable to accents um and but it gives like a great like athletic kind of like militant kind of um you know risk taking energy um very entrepreneurial and you know Aldebaran is 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 a wealth one also right so um and then to have Hades there, that kind of adds some, some darkness to that Mars, you know, and, and that and that potential of those like those cycles we talked about, right? So really breaking those is whatever those are is very very important. Um. So yeah, it gives really good ambitious ambition the Aldebaran Mars, um, really great business sense. Um, lots of guts, you know. Someone and is so competitive, like a born survivor with the Aries moon. Someone who who must win at all costs. Um, daredevil, right? Impulsive risk taker. Um, yeah, and uh, you know, very lucky. So they they have like the catchphrase like, "Who dare? Who dares wins?" But like more often than not, they're the ones who win. Um. But yeah, you have to really watch out for accidents and and um yeah. And it's also very, very high sex drive, high libido. Um, but yeah, it's like the energy, like high energy that um that gets them in the in, in the positions of success. So what else is there? Psyche on the Mars. Interesting. But Hades on the Mars um can definitely add like a real dark um side to your personality um and you just really really need to have a um an outlet a physical outlet for sure like if you don't have a physical outlet some people with like these types of charts will just smoke a bunch of green, the green stuff um so like finding a physical outlet that 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 six that 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 earth that you need to 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 kind of create is very important. Because Hades is the underworld, right? So it's just another sign that, you know, um, there, there's, there, there can be like a, a real, pri like, like kind of emotional outburst, like, like a real kind of primal energy to it, right? But also just like so much energy, right? So, yeah. And with psyche, um, so psyche is about the soul, obviously. Um, with Venus and Moon conjuncted, which you don't have, you have Mars. It keeps someone looking young forever. I've seen it. Um, Mars, I'm not quite sure. I have to actually look it up. I haven't seen psyche conjunct Mars before. Is my Wi-Fi working? Doesn't seem to be. No, finally. So, um, yeah, I think like, um, let's see if I can find any Mars. I think, you know, it definitely adds. A level of sexuality um but 
Hold on. Here it is. Yeah, so just like like very, very deep sexuality. Um and like something that connects like two souls, right? So it makes intimacy very important. And you're not gonna you most likely be someone that just like gives it up to anyone that fast. Um but then again, you do have impulsive energy. So, you know, it's it's uh it's hard to say. But yeah, I mean, psyche in itself um, is where the, the soul feels at home, right? So you feel at home in the 12th house, which can make someone a little bit of a loner, but then you have all these other very like less loner uh, external placements, right? So it's very interesting in your chart. So much going on. Um, yeah. So it's like, you know, a lot of times when you when you meet someone who just like gets you like you have that feeling they just get me it's like you might have like a something going on like in synastry with the psyche your psyches um so yeah like really it's um yeah really about like imagination you know going into places in your mind where time and space don't exist it's like very very dreamy um so yeah and um adventurous too likes to have fun and kind of lose yourself in the fun that's the that, or whether you whether you lose yourself in the fun is the question interesting all those and then oh yeah there was one more see so lots of stars lots of stars going on um so Mark Cab will be the last one I speak of before I end. How am I doing on time? Please say it at under 130. Oh, yes. 127. So Mark Cab, I'm trying to like not do two hour readings every time, but an hour 30 is still fucking long. But yeah, anyways. Um, so you have to watch out for people, basically. Um, you have to watch out for, for alcohol um, and it's, like excess in, in, in that way but, but because your venus is on the midheaven it just makes it so much stronger um but yeah markup on its own is usually like uh difficult um and it, can, it can bring evil associates and um what else but yeah because it, like I said, because it's on the midheaven, um, it's it's not it's not so bad. Because Markab, you know, is is another one that, that that does give honors and riches, right? So because it's on the midheaven, but there's also that that you know that 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 tends potential to go a little bit too far and be like you know combative and destructive and all that, right? So we've seen this with so many so much in your chart. Um, so yeah, just really watching out for taking too many like physical risks, you know, like don't climb Everest or something, or if you do, just be careful. Um, so yeah, super interesting chart. Um, one of the more interesting ones I've done as of late. Well, every chart's interesting, but I don't know. Something about this one is just very interesting. There's just so, there's just so much going on. But yeah, uh, get back to me about the other reading. I would love to do that. And it is 3.11 a.m. So I'm going to chill. And thank you for your patience. And uh, we'll, we will talk soon. All right. Ciao. Bye-bye. And I hope that the internet uh, made the reading flawless.